Hello. Anybody on my live tonight? Can you see my channel? I hope it's broadcasting. I know there's a delay, so I need to be patient. Okay, try to cover up some of that glare. Okay. Hi, Kay. Hi, Candace. Hi, Judy. Hi, Stacy and Chow. And hello, Lee. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Diane. Let me just put my charger in my phone so I don't run out of juice. That would be pretty bad. Make sure my phone's charging. Okay, because its battery was about dead when I came back here. Okay. Hmm. Are we charging? Boy, I hope so. Let me try something here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lori. Hi, Bernie. <laughs> Stacy, that's funny. All right. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that my trusty charger is, in fact, charging my phone. Because I don't want to run out of batteries. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Jen. Hi, Sherry. Hello, Belinda. Hi, Jan. Lee is in bed. Well, that's cool. Hopefully we don't bore you too much. Hi, Sally. Hi, Jonna. Oh, yes. Change it to live chat. I have to do that too, Stacey. Thank you for the reminder. All right, you guys. So I'm super excited to be here again. I think my little schedule is working out that Thursday nights is going to be my night <laughs> to do lives. Hopefully it'll continue. Um, it's just with my work and everything, it's always so busy at the beginning of the week. It doesn't really start to slow down. And I don't really get a break until the end of the week. So th therefore, it's hard for me to squeeze a live in in the evening. But I'm here now and I want to share with you some happy mail first. Before um, I, I start uh, showing you what products I want to share with you, which are called magic mushrooms. Okay. So, I don't see a Noel on, but I received a package from Noel, and I want to share with you what Noel sent me. Is Nancy on? I didn't see her pop on. Okay, cool. Um, so, Noel created these face masks for when um, she got together with Bill and Jan and a lot of other people. Let me think. Mary... Bonnie, and there was one more person that was there. I think it might have been, let me think, who was it? It was Jan and Noel and Bonnie and Bill, and there was one more person. Ah, I just can't remember. That's terrible. I think it was, I think it was, Stephanie, that's who it was. I think it was Stephanie. Anyways, they got together uh, and they got to uh, do some uh, Stephanie. Yes, it was Stephanie. Thank you, Jan. I got it. It took me a minute, but I remembered. Um, she, they got to visit some really cool um, craft stores and they had lunch together. And Stephanie and, uh, I'm sorry, Jan and Noel actually had sweatshirts that said FSC, but everybody had their FSC masks. So super, super cool. And Sherry, hi, hi Ryan. I'm glad you ordered the magic mushrooms and I'm gonna show you how to use them tonight, all right? So Noelle had a theme going this Christmas, which I thought was really super cool, uh, Scrabble. So she's got this cool card. I like the button and the little, uh, twine ribbon here and it says holly jolly and it's really cool like it's very sparkly it's really cute 
really cute and she made an ornament for me so it's my name and it's got a little jingle bell yeah yes Noelle's very talented and uh, Nancy's still waiting for her box to arrive hopefully it'll get here soon um, we uh, know that Noelle made a video on how she made these so you want to check out that if you are interested in learning more about this cool idea. I think it's really neat. And it's actually real Scrabble pieces, so that's neat. And then Noelle was part of the Stamp Wars Littles that was held on November the 21st. And she created this card with the uh, Indra stamp. And um, she sent it to me for a Get Well card. Isn't that pretty? So it's super colorful. And then on the inside, she even put butterflies on the inside. And she colored them, and they're all sparkly and pretty. So thank you, Noelle. Very sweet. Yes, wasn't that sweet? To, she was sweet to send those goodies along. I appreciate that. It's very, very sweet. All right, let me put this one aside and get to the next one. So um, part of the card swap, I received my Christmas card from... Australia. This is from Leanne and she's from Australia and it's super really um, uh, die cut with holographic silver paper and it's it's uh, raised a little bit so it's really thick whether there's maybe a maybe underneath like she layered it. It's got this beautiful um, frame around it and then this looks like she splattered it with um, paint or something and then she has a silver frame around that. Isn't that pretty? So that came all the way from Australia. It just came today. Just a beautiful winter scene for our card swap. And then on the inside, she embossed it with silver embossing powder. May Christmas bring joy and happiness to all your family. Thank you, Leanne. I love it. She stamped the outside of the card too. It says, Merry Christmas. Speaking of Australia, I got a care package today from our friends at Crafty Critta. I will show you that in a second. Um, this beautiful card is from Lynn over at Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Uh, she sent me a beautiful care package for, uh, uh, well, for Christmas. I was a guest designer for six months on their design team. And I think that's gorgeous. I think this is glitter paper. I don't think she put glitter on top, but I can't be sure. Um, I have a video that I put on my YouTube channel. It went live on Tuesday night where I show you how to stamp and then put glitter on top and make it stick. But this is beautiful. How pretty is that? So thank you, Lynn. And thank you for the care package with some really cool products that I can use in my craft room. Okay, another, I know, isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's an amazing card from uh, Lynn. Here's another beautiful card. This one is from our friend Meta, who um, is super talented. And she and I were on the same card swap group this month. I'm excited. This is Local King Rubber Stamps, a cardinal. And uh, Chow and I are going to um, do a, a live on Facebook where we use this cardinal stamp from Local King Rubber Stamps together. We're going to do a duo. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. That'll be with me and Chow. But anyways, Meta's card has a lot, a lot going on. Um, not only does she have this beautiful cardinal die cut and embossed, it's with, with clear embossing, there's also snowflakes behind the um, cardinal, and there's this Seasons Greetings banner, and it has a lot of sparkle and shine on it, so this is probably embossed too, and it's embossed around the edge. And then her background paper is so sparkly and pretty, and it has snowflakes embossed in it. So yeah, just super beautiful. She is so talented. I love her cards, so thank you, Meta. Okay, so that's my Happy Meal for now. Oh, I got one more I wanted to show you. Uh, this is from Nancy. 
she made this with um, a gel press and acrylic paint and ink, and it's uh, Indra, our moth butterfly friend. And uh, she sent me this uh, for Get Well. Um, and also uh, as a thank you for, um, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, you know, hosting them uh, f when they came to visit me, which was so much fun. Yes, I'm still like, like thinking about our time together, how much fun we had and how great it was to meet Nancy. Well, I met Nancy before, but to meet, see Nancy and Leah again and to meet Ryan, you know, in person. And I have to tell you, he is a total sweetheart, you guys. Um, we're so lucky to know Ryan. And we're I am blessed that the Lord brought Ryan into my life. He's been a great friend, and I've learned so much from him. Um, my ability has definitely changed as a result of watching Ryan and learning from him. And I am just blessed to know him. Just like Nancy. I mean, I learned so much from her. Oh, I just love you guys so much. I, I learned so much from Nancy when I first started stamping. And really never would have thought that we would be here today as the FSC. And that we actually got to see each other. They actually were at my house. Like, pinch me. Is it real? You know, um, it was just one of the best experiences ever. And it just made two, 2020, which has been a rough year, it made 2020 so much better. So, love you guys. All right. I'm trying not to get all mushy here. All right. Because I get choked up. Okay. All right. So, you guys remember, I'm going to... I'm going to raise my camera up a little bit because I am really close. Hi, Margaret. Speaking of Australia, how are you, Margaret? Okay. So you guys remember our friends at Crafty Critter. So they sent this really cool box to me today. I just got it today. And um, inside are some cards and some goodies. So let's take a peek. Let's first look at this card. This card is from Michelle. It's so cute. It's um, got the dog and the elf and the Christmas tree. I like this card. If I can get it open. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, she said, sending warmest summer wishes from Australia and for your Christmas. All right, so Margaret can tell us what's the weather like in Australia right now, Margaret. That's from Scott and Michelle. Super cute. And she sent me this card also. So there were two cards in this care package. Beautiful flowers. Uh, thank you for everything you do. So it's just so sweet of them. I really appreciate it, Michelle and Scott. That's so nice. Um, Crafty Critta is the company in Australia that sponsored one of our stamp wars and provided us with these backgrounds that we could then foil. So this is an example of a background from Crafty Critta. This is their Christmassy. And this background also is Crafty Critta. Okay. So these were foiled by me. Um, they're nice and big. They're five by sevens. So that was so much fun using the Crafty Critta uh, products. So we want to say thank you to them for sponsoring Stamp Wars. And um, I got some Jelly Babies. So these are from the Natural the natural Confectionery Company. No artificial flavors, no GMO. Um, and on the back, it says, made it has australia and it has new zealand so that's pretty cool so thank you so much no high fructose corn syrup so that's awesome i can't wait to try them and i'll let you guys know how they taste okay <laughs> yes craft gidge you're so right about that yes and leah is so talented too and so creative 
And then, oh my gosh, this is so cool, you guys. Wait till you see this. I love it. Tracy's a crafty critter. Are you? www.craftycritter.com. Super cute. And I drink coffee every morning. So you know I'm going to be using this. And then on the back it says storage, foil art, foil, chipboard, shakers, SVGs, card toppers. Yay! Hey, I got my own mug from Crafty Critta. I'm so excited. And I'm using it for coffee. Every morning I drink a bigger cup than this so I can fill this up and then go back for a second cup. That'll be super. It'll be put to good use. So thank you so much, Michelle and Scott. You guys are sweethearts for sending this care package. I know Chow got one too, and I think Nancy's is held up somewhere at the post office. But uh, that really made my day. I loved it. I loved telling my husband and my son, I got mail today from Australia. That was so much fun. Not only the Crafty Crit of mail, but also from Leanne. But yeah, this is how they packaged it. It has their it has their um, sticker on each side. Isn't that cool? Okay. All right. Let me try to catch up with the comments. Sorry, folks. Um, talking about Steeler masks. Margaret um, is telling us about the weather in Australia right now. Let me see. Anything else that I missed? Let's see here. Nancy, thank you for listing the discount code for Crafty Critter. Um, and I'm doing well, folks. I'm still healing. I think that I thought I was, oh, I was healed and ready to go. But I still have tenderness and sore. So I know that it's healing on the inside. Um, the mesh and everything is, you know, I think it's a little bit swollen right now. But I think it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to be fine, you know. Uh, I had a very good experience with my uh, surgery. And somebody told me the other day, whenever I said that I felt really good and I felt that I was healing well, uh, a friend of mine said, well, you had a good doctor then. Because if you're feeling this good following surgery, you know you had a good doctor. So I'm glad that I went to um, the city I went to Pittsburgh to have my surgery. I found a doctor who specialized in abdominal hernia repair and gallbladders removals and appendix removals, yada, yada, yada. So he was the guy that I picked and I think I made a wise choice. All right, let's get into the magic mushrooms. So tonight we're going to, um, yeah, you're right, Bernie, it does. You think you know, hey, I got this, like, I'm back to my normal self. But um, then you start feeling like a little pain, like a little bit. And you're like, well, maybe I'm overdoing it. So I'm definitely going to be more careful and make sure that I, you know, don't lift anything and, you know, be very careful about what I do so that I can heal. Because the better I heal and the more I rest, the better I'm going to feel, right? Who doesn't want to be back to 100%? I wish I could be back to 100% right now, but I'm just not quite there yet. All right, so what we're going to do tonight is learn about magic mushrooms. What in the world are magic mushrooms? So magic mushrooms are a product. I do know my limit, Bernie, sometimes, although sometimes I push it and then I'm like, Oh boy, you know, feeling a little bit tender and I need to be careful. So magic mushrooms are a product that um, are available through local King rubber stamps. And I actually purchased a set when they have a um, local King rubber stamp had a big sale for Black Friday. And so I um, splurged a little bit and got these because I really wanted to give them a try. I like to watch Lisa the owner and the, oh my gosh, my phone is so tilted. I'm so sorry. And all of the things that she does on her YouTube channel um, for Local King Rubber Stamp. And one of the things that she plays with very often are these magic mushrooms. So they're um, like a foam. Uh, they remind me, I'll tell you what they remind me of. 
they remind me of the same type of material that we use, we, we have in our pan pastel uh, art sponges. So this is what this reminds me of, okay? That's what it reminds me of. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my camera. Let's try to adjust this so it's a little bit better. Okay. Okay. I do have a code for a discount for local King rubber stamps. And I'm sure that Chow is going to list it, but I, I wrote it down before we went live. So it's local King rubber stamps. It's 25% off. It's good until the 14th. All right. And the code is LK NS YT 25. All right, that's the code, and it's only good until the 14th, okay? Yep, I do love to craft. It does make me feel better. I totally agree with you, Gidge. All right, so that's local, and I'll tell you what these initials stand for. Local King Nancy Stamps YouTube 25, okay? Because Nancy did a live with... um several products from Local King Rubber Stamps, and she's actually going to be having a giveaway. So what you need to do is go to the FSC, and Nancy has a post there about her little contest she's having, uh, and she's going to be giving away some stuff from Local King Rubber Stamps. Local King Rubber Stamp. I always say stamps, but it's stamp. Okay. Okay, so this is what a magic mushroom looks like. They come packaged... And these nice little storage containers. This is how they arrive to you. So I picked the set of 10. So this set of 10, let me see. It has 10 and a, and, an, oh, and I got the holding base. And, the, and this was $49.99, but I got it on sale because it, I, I purchased it on Black Friday. But what they... What this, what I purchased was the, the little holders. So what you do is you can store them in these little plastic mushroom containers. But when you're creating, you can use the little acrylic stand. And they stand up really nice. Okay. So that's the system that I purchased. Now... You can purchase them without this little acrylic stand. You know, it's up to you, however you want to do it. You just have to check it out and see what they have. But they come in this box. So I, I know that when I'm not using them, I'm going to put them back in their little plastic containers and then let them be stored in this box. That'll keep them nice, I think. So you're just being here with me as I unbox these and get them ready to use. Uh, I did try them real quick before we went live. So the yellow, I used uh, yellow ink on the yellow. And then I used an orange on the orange. So you can see that it has like an orange tint to it. But that's okay because, you know, that's what you get them for, to use them. And the pink has like a reddish pink tint because I did, like I said, play with them for a few minutes before we went live. And I can show you how to clean them because I watched Lisa's video and she explains that as well. She's got a lot of great videos on how to use these. So this is only my first time, okay? So bear with me here because just like any craft tool, you know, the more you use it and play with it, you know, the better you're going to get with using it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do tonight. All right. So I have this stamp that I really like um, that I purchased also during the Black Friday sale. Hey, Tracy, I'm so glad you made it. That's awesome. Thank you, Nancy and Chow, for putting the links up and also the coupon codes. Remember, the coupon for Local King Rubber Stamp is only good until December 14th. Okay, you guys know I love trees. It's hard for me to resist a stamp that has pretty trees on it. This one is called Silence, and it's a nice big red rubber stamp that we're going to use, and we're going to uh, make a background with the magic mushrooms and some 
dye-based ink from Catherine Pooler, okay? All right, so what I have here is um, Catherine Pooler Minis, Life of the Party. It's called Party Collection, Life of the Party. And um, if you are interested in, in investing in some uh, Catherine Pooler inks, I would recommend you go to Not Too Shabby and use my affiliate link at Not Too Shabby. I have an affiliate link that you can save 10% on anything at Not Too Shabby. And, and she does have Catherine Pooler inks, these minis. That's where I bought them at. All right. Yes. So what we're going to do is pull out a couple colors. I'm going to pull out Tutti Fruity, Tiki Torch, and Party Dress. All right. So we've got pink, uh, yellowish, orange, and then orange orange okay one thing that I want to say it's very important that your ink pads be juicy I, I feel that using the magic mushrooms having juicy ink pads is a really good way to get a great result all right um, so I did re-ink these and so they're they're juicy I actually recently bought re-inkers when Catherine Poehler had a sale um, on her site she had a sale it's no longer on sale but I did not get these re-inkers from not too shabby I got them from Catherine Puller and I'm just going to keep them in the bags that they came in and then I can look at the names on the front and I'll know which one I need to get hello how are you doing so nice of you to uh, be with us tonight okay yeah Tracy check check this out I think you'll like these uh magic mushrooms. All right, so the paper that I'm using, paper is another thing. This is Himilco. Um, it's a, I would call it like a semi-gloss paper. I don't know if you can see, it has a little bit of a coating to it, just a little tiny bit. Um, and it makes it so that when you apply the dye-based inks, they just slide right on. So let's get to it. All right, any questions so far? We're going to start with our Tiki Torch, which is the orange color. And we will grab the orange magic mushroom. Oh, okay, another, God's desire for me. I'm sorry, I forget your first name. Um, another person here who has just recently purchased the magic mushrooms. Sherry did too. So what I am just saying is, I found that having a juicy ink pad that's dye based, you know, is a really good way uh, for using these. So the juicier the ink pad, the better. And you can tap if you want, but I want to go with stroking it, be, like with strokes back and forth, because I think it um, looks better that way. All right, so we're going to re-ink this. This is Tiki Torch. I, I reinked it last night, but I used it a lot too. I was using the blending brushes. That was two nights ago, not last night. I, I was uh, making backgrounds. All right, so let's find our Tiki Torch. And we're going to go ahead. Now, this is really cool. Um, if you look at the re-inker, the color is, is different than the actual colors. It just looks different to me. Like when I look at this, I think sort of like a red. But it's, it's not. It's orange. All right, hold on one second, you guys. Pause. I need to look at something real quick. Okay, um, my administrators are sending messages to me and I want to make sure that I am mindful of their trying to reach me tonight. All right, while we're doing that, let's just shake this up. Okay, Diana, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. Okay, let's see here. Oh, okay. I thought maybe the administrators were trying to uh, get a hold of me about something, that there was a problem, but there's no problem. It's it's all good. All right, so we're just going to put a couple drops of this like that on the ink pad, and it will absorb into that. Okay, so that's what I said about having ink, ink pads that are juicy. Okay. All right, now let's do that again. So we've got nice juicy ink pad. We've got our magic mushroom. Okay, I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. See that ink on there? And then we'll just go back and forth. 
How cool is that? Of course, the Himilco paper is um, shiny. It's kind of glossy. It's kind of coated. Um, those are some of the words I would use to describe it. And that just glides right across there, you guys. Back and forth. Super easy. Um, very easy to use. Um, Tracy had a question about using them with pan pastels. Um, I have also seen people use them with pan pastels. Can you use them for ink and then the pan pastels or you need to wash? I think you would need to wash them. But the thing is, Lisa on her channel said, you know, don't put these under water. When you wash them, if you put them under water, they're going to expand a little bit. Here's how you would wash them. Okay, you take a microfiber towel that is slightly damped. So this is just plain water. Okay, this is an old bottle. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to use the same magic mushrooms that you use for pan pastels and inks. You want separate set. You want a separate set. And I know that on the Local King Rubber Stamp website, they have where you can buy two sets at one time. So if you're interested in having them, not only for inks, but also for pan pastels, I would say you wanna grab two sets. So you just have your damp uh, microfiber towel and you're just going to rub the magic mushroom across there, you know, until it comes off clean. And that's how you clean them, all right? You do not want to put them directly in water. And these are dye-based inks. So definitely uh, would want to stick to the dye-based inks. And like Nancy said, just like if you have a makeup sponge and you put it under water, it's going to expand. The same thing happens with your um, with your magic mushrooms. So um, I know Lisa said that she just keeps a dedicated color code for her magic mushroom. So it's always the same color. This this would always be used for orange. And so I wouldn't necessarily have to worry about like deep cleaning it each time, I would just stick it back in its little plastic container um, and then it would be ready to go the next time. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I would definitely advise you on getting two sets if you're going to use uh, pan pastels and the inks. I wish I had two sets because as I'm using these, I'm thinking these would be awesome for pan pastels. So, okay, this is Tutti Fruity, Catherine Puller, Tutti Fruity which is sort of a pinkish orange. Um, it kind of reminds you like a pink grapefruit in a way. I don't know. Okay, how easy is that? So if you're someone like me who struggles with pain in my joints and have um, like arthritis and sometimes my fingers swell up, it's nice to have a tool that's so easy to work with. Um, that you don't have to apply a lot of pressure and it goes on really easily okay so this last color is called party dress and it's pink and oh I used the wrong one okay so this can happen sometimes you guys right okay so this is my pink sponge which I just used on my orange ha 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 and this is my reddish orange sponge which I should have used on my tiki torch so that happens okay because I'm getting myself out of order so this is the this is the example of when you might want to take your microfiber towel and just rub it in there like this back and forth get some of that ink off if you have the wrong color on there by mistake okay you're fine everything's going to be okay all right there you go back to pink again and i got a lot of ink on this so i'm going to start off of the paper and then slide back and forth one thing that's nice about dye inks, yes, like blending butter. You're exactly right. That is exactly what it's like. I couldn't even think of a better way to explain it. With dye inks, they dry, they dry fast, okay? So that's nice that they dry fast because then you can stamp on them. You know, you, you uh, know that you don't want to uh, have a wet, wet surface when you go to stamp. But having these dye inks like from Catherine Pooler yeah, they work very well for this method. 
Yep, and it's super smooth, you guys. I'm telling you, I'm not press pressing hard at all. Um, you can go back in again if you want to apply another coat or if you want to work on blending those, you know, colors in between, which, you know, that's part of blending. You want to get your line blended, obviously. Okay, we're going to go in with our... Oh, I just messed up again, you guys. I, that was yellow, and I grabbed... I, you know, you would think I would, like, know my colors, right? You would think. I'm not too worried about it, seriously. They're all pretty much the same color family. And when I use my blending brushes for my Distress Oxides, I used one blending brush for blue. I mean, that's the way I do it, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, that dried up a little bit. I don't know that I'll be able to soften that line. Let me go over it again. Thank you, Tracy. This is my this is my uh, go-to color for sunset. Yellow, orange, and pink. <laughs> I use it over and over again in my cards. All right, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I know that's a very harsh line. But once I stamp the stamp onto this, it's not really going to be that um, noticeable. All right. Hi, Melody. Thank you for joining us. Okay, this is a little wet. So I want this to dry. Hey, hey Renee, I didn't see you sneak on. Yep. And we'll do a blue and a purple background as well. All right. Okay, so let this dry. I'll put my inks back away. Dye-based inks do dry quickly. We've got that going in our favor. Okay, so I've got my Tim Holtz. Uh, yes, Diana, the... Um, Catherine Puller inks are very, you know, very fun to play with. I really like them. Um, and so I would definitely recommend them. Um, if, if, if you buy them through the Not Too Shabby Shop, um, using my affiliate link, um, there's a discount of 10%. So I would encourage you guys to check that out. I can link my discount to Not Too Shabby at the end of this video that'll have the link to these inks by Catherine Puller if you're interested in these. All right, so just laying my stamp here on the panel. All right. And I'm going to stamp with Catherine Puller Midnight Ink. Oh, Chow, thank you so much. Chow just linked the Not Too Shabby link where you can get 10% off your order using my affiliate link. So if you, yes, thank you, Renee. If you are interested in any inks um, from Kath, from Catherine Pool of the Minis, you can get those through Not Too Shabby and get a discount. Yep, she's got me covered. All right, so we've got Midnight Archival Ink using Blue Knight Rubber Stamps handle. How cool is that? Look at that. I'm holding this ink pad without getting my fingers all inky. And, you know, I've I know we've all been there where you create a card and the ink pad slips out of your hand and then the ink has um, basically stamped onto your panel and then you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Uh, this handle helps you have a nice solid grip on your ink pad. It comes in two sizes. This is the new size for universal and then it has a, there's the original one that's a little bit thicker. Um, but I don't know what I'd do without this. This is one of those tools that makes stamp making, card making so much easier. Can't recommend it enough. And oh, Blue Knight Rubber Stamps having a sale right now too. Um, and they have a sale on their website. I think it's 20% off. And it's also only good until I think the 14th. So... If you're interested in getting yourself some of these awesome ink um, stamp pad uh, handles, that's where you want to check out, check that out over there. All right, let's stamp. All right. Oh no, 
You lost your platform. Well, you were busy last night, Elizabeth. You did a live and you had a lot going on in your live. I think anytime you do a gel press, you need to have a lot of space and a lot of room because as you're stamping those prints, you have to have a place to put them. So I can see that. It's hard to contain it into one little area when you're playing with your oh, gel press. Oh my gosh. That is so pretty. How vibrant does that look, you guys? What do you think? I think on that Himilco paper, it just really, whoo, it's really bright. So it was a nice, it was a nice way for me to apply my ink. I, and I think that, uh, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. Um, this is on Himilco paper. Uh, Nancy's Amazon shop, uh, she has a link in her Amazon shop for the Himilco paper. I mean, I consider it like a semi-gloss. It definitely has a coating to it, but it's a very minimal coating. Yes, Renee, I love this stamp. It's called um, Silence, I think. Yep, it's called Silence. So this is such a pretty stamp. Hi, Millie. Nice to see you. And with a stamp like this, it's pretty universal. You would just need to do your background in whatever blend you'd like and then stamp it. And then you could put a sentiment on it. It could say with sympathy. It could say happy birthday. It could say thinking of you. Thank you. Uh, that's what I like about these kind of stamps. They have universal usage. So this is the panel that I made right before I went live. So hello, Susie. Okay, so this is dry now, pretty much. Uh, let me see, is this dry? I think I might have smeared it whenever I grabbed it out of the stamp positioner. Yeah, it's dry now. And I can trim this down and put it on a card panel. So let's do that real quick. And I'm gonna put a piece of paper in here. But yeah, this one, is nice and dry. You can see that I used um, the same colors, but each time you blend, it's always a little bit different. You're always gonna get a little bit different look. Okay, so this is the first one on the left and the second one on the right, okay? Yep, and this, this will dry, you know, dry back and it might, you know, look a little bit more like this. Now, because this is Himilco paper and it's got a semi-gloss, I would not recommend doing any kind of ink, uh, putting any kind of water on top of it. But we're going to blend using regular cardstock, and then that's when I'm going to splatter some uh, ink, some water on it. So I'm going to take my water, and I'm going to put it in my hand, and I'm just going to like splatter it to, because uh, the Catherine Puller inks are reactive to water. All right. All right, so this one is dry, okay? And I think it would look really nice with a black card base. What do you guys think? Let's look here. Yeah, I think that's stunning together. So we're gonna have to trim this down a little bit. I've got a nice little mini trimmer. Nancy got me this. It's perfect for trimming things down to the right size to make a card. So I just need to take a little bit off the edges and a little bit off the bottom and it's going to it's going to be perfect size for my A2 card. Yeah, I'll just trim this down to 4 inches. Trim the top 5 and a half, well 5 and a quarter, not the top but the lengthwise. That might be perfectly fine. Let's check here. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab one of these pre-cut that I have, these pre-cut and ready to go for when I make cards. I don't know about you guys, but I try to cut things down ahead of time. That way, if I'm in, the, if I'm in a rush and I need to make something, I can grab it. Oh my gosh. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it. Okay, we're going to put a sentiment on this, too. I have a sentiment that says, hello, and it's actually 
die cut and ready to go. So let's grab that. Okay. I have a whole bunch of them that I cut out. If I can find it. Oh boy. Maybe I spoke too soon. Hold on. Okay. I see them. I see them. I found them. All right, so we've got Thank You. This is a Catherine Puller die. And Hello. Also, Catherine Puller. So I think one of those would look nice. I'm going to go with Hello. If you put Hello on the front of a card, you can really put anything on the inside. Happy birthday. Thank you. You know, get well soon. All that. You could just leave it blank too and wait until you're ready to make a card and then you can decide what sentiment you want. My sentiment is sticking to each other. Okay. Yes, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So yeah, when I cut sentiments out, I put them in these little tins from the Dollar Tree, which they're only a dollar each, all right? Yeah, it's my words, my my word die stash. I always have some cut and ready to go. Especially thank you, hello. Not necessarily happy birthday. I don't necessarily keep that one cut in advance. But, and here's the thing. If you're going to be cutting one to make a card, you might as well cut a couple more and then you'll have them for the next time when you're ready to make a card. That's the way I look at it. And I know, like Ryan, he, he does the same thing. He makes a whole bunch of sentiments, strips, and then he embosses them, and then he has them pre-cut and ready to go. What a time saver that is, right? All right, now we're going to take this up a notch. So, yes, we could definitely keep this white and just have it, you know, be the, be the standout color. But I want to heat emboss my sentiment. So let me grab my embossing powder. Where did I put it? I just had it today. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm thinking gold. Or we can do a gold glitter. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty. Why not? Let's see. Yeah, it's the perfect size, Jen. Yep, you can, you can um, put all kinds of little this and that in there. But I do use it to, um, I use those specifically for my uh, die cuts. Yep. You can also, if you have one of those carts from Michael's, this will stick to the side of it. That's what's nice too. Thanks, Bernie. I also keep some of my dies handy. Um, if I'm going to be um, making certain cards, then I keep some of my smaller dies in there too. So it's, it's the perfect size. It really is. Okay, let's get some Versafine, Versafine ink. Um, oh, sure, I can measure it. Let me grab my ruler. It's not really that big. It's about, like I said, it's from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so... Oops, where's the inch? Where's the inch side? Okay, so it is three and a quarter. Now, I don't know, like, because it's a circle. Three and a quarter, and the lid is three and a half. That's the size, okay? And they make smaller ones, too, little baby size ones, too. Let me show you. Hold on, I'm reaching. Here we go. They make these little baby size ones too. And I keep some die cuts in there. Oh, these ones say happy birthday. No, happy anniversary. I must have been making an anniversary card. So these are from the Dollar Tree. And you can see they're smaller. See that? So these are for your little tiny sentiments. This is two and a quarter 
for the lid. And the magnetic base is less than two. <laughs> it's almost two, but it's like two and an eighth. But they're both magnetic bases. So you can stick them to your cart, the, the craft cart that I got at Michael's. So that makes it nice, nice for storage. Okay, all right, let's see here. Let's get some embossing done here so we can get this card done. Um, I'm going to, oh, I can, no, I don't need that. Just getting my heat gun and Versamark. Okay, you're welcome. Sandy said she cuts a bunch of sentiments at once and stores them in a little snack bag. Oh, Sandy, you and I are alike then, because I've done that as well. Let's see if I can't find a little baggie full. I was making this one card over the summer, and um, I made extra sentiments, but they were long. They wouldn't fit in the little container, so I put them in little Ziploc bags. And that was a good way to store them, too. I can't find any right now. But, uh, yeah, that's a good way to do it, too. Okay. Moving on. Let's get this thing done. Okay. Hello, Irene. Sorry guys, I'm trying to plug in my heat gun. I uh, have to be careful. I don't want to hurt myself with my surgery that I just had. I want to make sure that I don't, you know, when I, when I bend over, I don't want to like stretch anything, something the way it's not supposed to be. That would not be good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is grip my little embossing powder, buddy and put some powder on the hello. You don't have to do that. I guess that's really just an extra thing. That's just an extra step in the process. Yep, I have to be careful, Irene. I don't want to overstretch it or, you know, make it... You know, I don't want to do anything to, um, I'm trying to find my VersaFine ink. Don't want to do anything to hurt myself after having that major surgery. Major surgery, it's not, it might not be a major surgery in the sense that some people have surgery, but for me it was because I haven't had that many surgeries in my life. It was surgery, it was major for me. All right, I can't find my regular VersaMark, so... Oh, I've got two kinds of Versamarks here, which that's because I can't find my regular Versamark. Oh, I found it. <laughs> oh, good idea. Hi, Christine. How are you? So some people don't realize this, but Versamark, so this is my grungy one. See, it's old and grungy. I use it when I glitter and things like that, but I don't, I'm not going to throw it away because you have to have a grungy one right? And then this one is called Frost. It's called Verso Mark Dazzle. So it's really pretty. It's got some shimmer to it. So if you stamp with it, it comes out like that. I think I showed this on my last video too. That's the Frost, which right now making holiday cards, that could really come in handy because it does look like Frost. And this one's called Champagne. All right. And it too has a lot of mica in it and glitter. It's pretty. It looks like gold champagne color. Well, that's why it's called Champagne. Show you what that looks like. Yeah, there's different kinds of Versa Marks. This one's Champagne. And this one is called Frost. And I want to make a card with this. I want to make a card where I use a tree, like a pine tree, and use this one that's called frost. Like I have the idea in my head. I just have to do it. 
I have to execute my idea. But I'll get there. I'll get there someday. Where is my regular Versa mark now? That's just driving me nuts. Okay, so we'll just use Mr. Grungy Versa mark. And we'll just live with it. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm putting gold, glitter, embossing powder right on top of this. Let's make sure this is juicy. Well, I'm afraid that's not juicy enough. Okay. Yeah, they're very pretty. Yeah, I like them too. Okay, let's use the champagne. All right, let's just do it. So what I'm doing is just getting this sentiment covered. Oh, that's actually pretty, you guys. I don't know if I have to put glitter on it. Oh, my. Hmm, maybe I don't need to put embossing powder on this. Maybe I just need to dry it. Because it's kind of pretty. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's got a lot of glitter to it. A lot of mica. I like that. All right. All right. So I think what I'll do, let's make this one. Okay, we'll just do that one. Jeez, oh, I probably just knocked half of the ink off of it. I just dropped it. Okay, all right, that looks good. Well, not really. One more time. Don't rush, because if you rush... You end up making more of a mess than you would if you would just take your time. Okay. 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 The Versamark, the different colors, I got them through scrapbook.com. Yep. I think that's where I got those. Oh, I could use clear embossing powder. Good idea, Melody. Good idea. Let me see if I have any clear embossing powder. Yes, I do. Okay, let's try that. So we're going to emboss it with a clear embossing powder. Just to make it shiny, because it looks pretty the way it is. I think. Okay, good. Candace and Tracy were on the same page. And Melody had a great idea to make it shiny. We're going to go with that. All right, so I'm just going to slide that off and cover it with some clear embossing powder. Yeah, Nancy has an affiliate link for scrapbook.com. So if you're going to get some of that uh, and, and Versa Mark, the different inverse, the different types of Versa Mark, you know, maybe please use Nancy's link, her affiliate link. Oh yeah, Gloria, I love the Versafine Champagne and the Versafine uh, Frost. I think they're so pretty. If you are doing like a watermark background with snowflakes, how pretty would that be? I mean, on a dark cardstock, that's just so pretty. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get this covered and out of there. Let's see if I can manage to do this without messing it up. All right, let's put our embossing powder back in our little bowl. All right. Oh, Nancy, thank you. There's a link in Amazon that has this uh, Versamark embossing powder. And also, Chow, put a link for scrapbook.com.
Wow. Melanie, thank you for recommending it. Oh, that hurts. I just burned myself with this little tool. I'm all right. No biggie. Okay, let's get this off of my finger. Get this out of the way so we can have a good look at this. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. I'm going to get a piece of darker cardstock, though, so you can see it better. Okay, here we go. What do you think? Like it? I like it. I think it really is pretty. So shimmery. Oh, thank you, Jen. I'm so glad you're on the chat. Yeah. All right, here, here it is. Isn't that pretty? The mica is so pretty. Very nice. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast. Here we go. I'll go a little bit slower. Okay. Nice. Try something new that I've never tried before. I, I like it. Okay, so that's nice. It's a nice champagne color. I think it matches the colors that I chose for my ink blending, you know, very well. I'm very pleased with that. All right, let's glue it down. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Irene. Thanks, Bernie. Gloria. I have Gloria's beautiful stopper topper that um, goes on top of my art glitter glue. Show you how. As soon as I get the booger off of it. Okay. Just put the pin in the art glitter glue. This is the, it's made by Gloria. It's got uh, purple and green and a butterfly that's purple. I love it. It's so pretty. Okay. Let's get this glued down. Well, you know what, Jen? You say you're having some Ben and Jerry's. That sounds really good. Tell me what your favorite flavor is of ice cream, everybody. Let's talk about ice cream. <laughs> Why not? I did have a little bit of ice cream myself tonight. I had gelato with a cappuccino. So it was called, it was called uh, like espresso cappuccino with gelato from Schwann's. It's really good. I had some of that tonight. I like coffee ice cream. It's my favorite. So what kind are you having? Ooh, caramel brulee. That sounds good. I know uh, Jen DiCarlo said she was eating some ice cream. That's what, that's what made me go there. Why did I have to go there? Oh, butter pecan. Pistachio. My, my son would like pistachio. Oh, Cherry Garcia. That's funny. Yep, I will. I'm going to straighten it out so it's not so warped. I got a little hunk of something stuck to the back of it as well. So I got to pull that off. Oh, frozen raspberry yogurt. Okay. Yeah, yum. They all sound delicious to me. Moose tracks. Vanilla and peanut butter. That's what my husband would like. He loves his peanut butter ice cream. He actually had some the other night. It was like peanut butter and I think chocolate ice cream or something. But I think it would be better with vanilla. All right, so I have a pair of tweezers. I just have to decide where I'm going to put it. I, I just feel drawn to putting it down here in this corner. So that's what we'll do. You can die cut more than one and stack them up to give it some height. That would be nice too. But for the sake of time, we'll just deal with this one. So I'm just putting little dots of glue. I'm barely squeezing it all. This is how I try to do it so I don't get glue everywhere on my project. And then sometimes I'll even just like rub the glue in so that it doesn't get all over my ink blended background. And I mean, yeah, it's messy, but whatever. I can wash my hands later. I'd rather do that than have my uh, pretty blended background smeared. 
Okay. Let me just hold this for a second. Oh, peppermint. Cotton candy, you guys, wow. Rocky Road or chocolate chip. I like uh, cookies and cream. I like, as I said, coffee is my favorite. But I like butter pecan or like a maple ice cream too. We have a local place that makes um, ice cream. And I always get their maple. Okay, so here we go. Here's our finished card. I think it turned out pretty nice. I like it a lot. How about you? Okay, and then here's another one that we just did together. And if I was in a real big hurry and didn't have time to do any kind of embossing, I could ink blend this, thank you, a different color and make it stand out. I think it turned out really nice. I think they both did. I like it. You like the white sentiment? Okay. We'll keep this one white. We can do hello. I like that hello. Again, that's Catherine Puller's dye. Yeah, the white really stands out. Like, compared to the champagne, yeah. The white really stands out. Okay, let's do some blues and purples now. All right? So, we'll use the same stamp. And we'll use inks from Catherine Puller. But we'll go with our blues and our purples instead. We'll see how the Magic Mushroom does on regular paper. All right, so... I have some accent opaque cardstock. And it is, let's see. This is an 80 pound cardstock. And we're gonna do blues. And we're gonna see how this magic mushroom works on regular cardstock. All right, so let me grab some colors here. I, I don't have that many purple inks from Catherine Puller, but this flirty fuchsia is really pretty. Um, I've got something borrowed. And I think for our mid-tone, I'll do this aqua teeny, maybe. Maybe I'll do the aqua teeny at the bottom. Yeah. Or I could do lime. Ricky. I'll stick with aqua teeny. I like teal. Okay. All right. These might need inked. So let me grab my ink refills. Okay. All right. Flirty fuchsia. I know I re-inked that the other night. Same with something borrowed, but once I start blending, I might have to re-ink. Oh, that's cool, Kay. Good for you. All right, let's start with our um, flirty fuchsia. So this has never been used before. This is a brand new magic mushroom. See how bouncy that is? It's bouncy, but it's firm. You know, it's really, it's really cool material. Put a little bit of ink on there. And I'm going to have to re-ink, I think. I don't think there's enough juiciness in this. Yeah, let's get our re-inker flirty fuchsia. There's aqua teeny. Tutti frutti. All right. Something borrowed. I'm going to just grab the re-inkers for all of these. Okay, flirty fuchsia. Okay, I'm going to shake it up. Yep. Yeah, like I said, I've been watching Lisa play with these magic mushrooms, and I thought, well, for all the ink blending I do on backgrounds, I think it would be definitely a good investment. So I'm glad I got them. They, they, they seem to work really well. You can also use them on stamps. You don't have to just use them for backgrounds. So what we'll do after I make this panel, 
we'll grab a local king rubber stamp stamp and we'll actually stamp it with these and I know um, her her new background stamps she did a video where she um, used these for her new background stamps the ones that are slimline boy they turned out really nice okay and then we'll go in with something borrowed Oh, Bernie, you like the mushrooms too. Okay. Anybody else have the magic mushrooms? Okay, let's go ahead and put some ink on that. That's um, something borrowed. That's our blue color. And then we might as well do the aqua teeny while we're at it. Okay. All right. Oh, I was having a good old time with these re-anchors the other night making backgrounds. It was fun. Okay. Now we'll go get our blue sponge. This time I'm trying to make sure I grab the right color. Got a little bit of ink on there. Hold a second. This way. Okay. So you guys, I want to remind you that Stamp Wars is on Saturday. Can you believe it? Another Stamp Wars is on Saturday, you guys. So Saturday at 7 o'clock on Nancy Stamps channel, uh, we have Stamp Wars. And um, this time, Ryan is the moderator. He will be hosting and talking and interacting with us and doing sabotages which i'm nervous about to tell you the truth because ryan is probably going to really sock it to us i'm going to grab my purple and go back over this just to try to blend this a little bit yep that turned out pretty good okay and if you're not familiar with stamp wars um it's uh it's a contest where the FSC administrator, Stacy, Chow, Nancy, myself, Ryan, we each get a stamp set. We don't know what the stamp set is. It's sealed in an envelope. We're not allowed to look at it until the night of the stamp wars. We open it and then we have one hour to make a card or maybe two, depending on what. Oh, depending on, oh, Ryan. Ryan's nervous and he's not making a card. He's he's a moderator. I mean, he's like the host, but he's nervous. Don't be nervous, Ryan. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm the one who's nervous. And so far, I've never won a Stamp Wars. Um, Ryan has won several. Stacy won. Chow and I, I. I don't know if Chow won or not, but I think Stacy did once. So we underdogs me and chow we're gonna try to uh win it this time we're gonna try and of course ryan being the moderator and having control over the sabotages he's gonna probably have some real tricky things that we're gonna have to do so when when i say sabotages like in the past we had a sabotage where we were only allowed to use one hand, like we were only allowed to use our right hand for a certain period of time. And usually the sabotages are like 20 minutes each, but it depends. Chow won the first time she competed. Okay, Stacy. Oh, geez. Sorry. I thought Ryan did. So Chow won the first time. Tracy, me, I've never won. So I am definitely the underdog. But that's okay. It's really not about who wins. It's about having fun and learning from each other. Because it's very interesting to see when four people get the same stamp set, what do they do with it? Like, what's their ideas for taking it out of its container and, like, bringing it to life? Um... And each person has such a unique way of doing their cards. So even though it is the same stamp set, 
we all have a different perspective. And that's what I think is fun about it, seeing the unique. Yep, it's on Saturday. It's not tomorrow, it's on Saturday. Saturday at 7 on Nancy Stamps' channel. And it'll be recorded, so if you miss it, you can always um, catch it on the replay. I think that blended pretty nice. I think that would be a beautiful underwater background. What do you guys think? I think it would be pretty for like a mermaid or Sebastian. Super pretty, huh? Isn't that gorgeous? Also, thanks, Candace. The um, Stamp Wars involves giveaways. Thanks, Chow. So one person will win the stamp set of their own, uh, their very own, uh, of the stamp set that we're using. One person will win that. And then I'll do a video making a second card. Chow will do a video and me and Chow will each have our own giveaways. Stacy will do one. She'll have a giveaway. Ryan will do one. He'll have a giveaway. So not only are we learning a new stamp set and making and creating, we're also uh, doing a giveaway. It's all part of Stamp Wars. So how fun is that? I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to a Saturday night. I'm nervous. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm definitely nervous. But uh, what did Bernie say? This, this to me, I, the more I look at it, the more I think it needs to be like an underwater scene. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you know what I could do? I know what I can do. Okay. So Local King has this really cool new background stamp. It's called Spread. And it's going to look really nice, I think, on this card panel. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, I used it the other night, so I have to stamp in here. I didn't think I was going to use it, so I didn't pull it out in advance. If I can find it. Hmm, that's odd. Yeah, it's meant to be a sabotage. Yeah, it's hiding somewhere in my craft room. Well, that's frustrating. I really, there it is. This one. Okay, so it's for a slimline card. But you can also use it on an A2 card. So let's do that together. Okay, Kay, you got the new slimline background cards. This is one of them. I only got one. I wish I could have got all of them. I think they're incredible. Let's clean our stamp off. Nancy did a video where she created using all of the backgrounds, or pretty much all of them. She had a really cool video with the leaf background stamp, the new slimline leaf. She did one for um, the one that looks like coral. I think she did one for this too. This one's called spread. All right, let's go ahead and see what we can do about this. I have the one with waves too. I forgot about that. It's a, I think it's an A2 size background, right? Is that the one you mean? Oh, you know, I have this too, you guys. I have this one. So many choices. Stamp Wars 6 is being hosted by Ryan. Yep. Okay, you got one for Slimline? Yeah. Okay, so back to... 
this guy. Let's go ahead. It is very organic. Yes, I agree. It, it just looks like branches. It just has so many. If you look at it, everybody sees something, you know, different. But I saw branches. And, you know, I like trees. So, for me, it was a no-brainer. I was like, that's the one I want. Yeah, we have two stamp boards in December. They're back-to-back. -back. Okay, so I want to make sure I get this focal point, you know, stamped on the card base, this main part of the tree. Okay. And we'll go ahead and use Catherine Puller archival ink. And by the way, my card base is staying put because I put a little bit of this um, double-sided adhesive that is removable by scrapbook.com. I just went like this and put a little bit down on my phone. That way the card base stays in place. Sometimes whenever you're not able to use magnets, that's something you can do. I want them all too. I want all the background stamps made by Local King. They're gorgeous. Okay. Again, I'm using Archival Ink. Midnight Archival Ink by Catherine Puller. My desk is a mess here. Yes, I'm so glad you guys enjoy Stamp Wars. We have a lot of fun with it, even though we're nervous. And, you know, it, it's kind of nervous because you don't know what you're going to be getting yourself into. But it's fun. We're, we're there to have a good time. And we're there to, you know, like I said, support each other and also learn from each other. And, you know, we had the Stamp Wars Little, and that was a huge success. So I was so glad we were able to do that. Um, Tracy, um, Chow's husband made me a logo, if that's what you're talking about. Yes, he made me a logo. And I just need to color it in with my pan pastels. So that's what I have to do. All right, so what I'm going to do is pull this up. And I'm going to turn it. Yeah, the trademark. Yes, um, Nancy... Uh, Nancy applied for a trademark for Stamp Wars, in case anybody didn't know that. And so we were accepting donations through Nancy's PayPal of anybody who wanted to um, support the pursuit of the trademark. So um, if, if you want, I can list that in my description box when we're done. But it takes up to three months. All right, so I'm gonna clean this and then move it so that I can stamp the other side. And this is the way that I kind of thought we could use the slimline, the slimline stamp on an A2 size card. I think it's gonna turn out really nice. And, and I think the colors look great. Okay. Thank you, Georgiana. I didn't know that you were on tonight. So glad to see you. Thanks everybody for watching and Jumping on my live, I really appreciate it. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm not going to um, line it up flush. So this is where the stamp uh, bottom is. I'm just gonna back it out a little bit. There's a line here, so I wanna be able to blend this. Uh, so for my stamp cleaner, I have a um, stamp cleaner that I purchased from a company. It's not something that I made, but I want to start making my own stamp cleaner. I want to start um, using baby shampoo and glycerin. I just have some squeaky clean craft room cleaner that I use right now, which I'm almost out of this. And once I'm out of this, I'm going to be making my own. So that's my plan because somebody on the FSC had a, a recipe for making your own stamp cleaner using baby shampoo and glycerin. So, yes, Kay, that's the one, the DIY one, that's the one. That's the one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make my own. Okay, so let's just get this stamped here. 
I just want to get it to blend a little bit. We'll see how this looks. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't like that. To me, that looks like the line is too harsh. All right, so what we'll do is line it up with the base of the stamp at the bottom of the panel like this. And they're gonna be overlapping instead of the way I was trying to do it. And it'll turn out fine. Just have to stamp it again one more time. I don't like that line. I don't want there to be a line like that. Okay. Well, thanks, Jonna. Thank you, Joyce. Well, that doesn't look so good. All right, I'm gonna have to stamp it one more time in the other direction, just to balance it out. It's going to look very much like a lot of leaf, uh, branches all mixed up together. <laughs> but it'll, it'll be all right. Okay, let's go ahead. Do this. Tracy, just cover it with a sentiment. Yeah, a big sentiment in the middle, probably. I made some the other night with this, doing it this way, and they didn't look so bad. But this one is not looking the best. But it's all right. It'll be okay. If I could find the ones I made the other night, that would be super. But of course, I probably won't be able to. Woo! I just put my elbow in my archival ink. What the heck? I think what I'll do is take clear embossing powder, since I have it, and go over it with this. Let's see. Let's see how that makes it look. Okay, let's do some clear embossing powder. And I think some of this ink is wet enough that it will stick. It might not stick to all of the ink, but I think it's going to stick to some. Yep. Then again... My panel might be too wet to do that. I didn't think my ink was that wet. That's all right. We're still gonna. We're still going to do this. We're going to cover it with clear embossing powder. I'm gonna emboss the entire panel. Okay. All right. Okay, this will be nice and shiny once it's done because I covered the entire panel. We'll see how this looks.
there's definitely a lot of overlap here with my um, tree branches. They're kind of uh, overlapping each other in the middle, so they kind of get lost. But the edges look really cool. So this could definitely be used for your matte layer. And you could put another layer on top of this. Um, you can also put a big sentiment in the middle. And I think that would really look nice. Oh, sorry. Dropped it. Yeah. I think I still need to... I need to hit this again with my heat tool. I don't think it's quite done yet. Right in this section here. I was thinking the same thing. It looks like something Ryan would make. Definitely. I agree. For your matte layer and then a layer over top of it. Because if you look at those edges, how cool do they look? The edges look great. <laughs> Super cool. Jeez, I still missed a spot. All right, so what we can do is take a piece of blue, like a navy blue cardstock, and I think I have some here. I know what we're gonna do. It's definitely got a lot of texture. All right, so I've got this blue cardstock. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is trim this you could also use a die if you have like a die. Oh, I have that die that's got like torn edges. So let me grab that real quick. I think that would look really nice on here. Let me grab that die. found it. I found the circle one. I have one that's a square. Mm -hmm. Chow was the one who uses that die and got me to get one. Thank you, Chow. You're such an enabler. Okay, where's the square one? It's got to be here. It's close. I found it. Okay, so we've got the square dies. <laughs> the company is called Dies to Die For, okay? And they're in Nancy's Amazon shop, the, the link to this. Torn Edge Nesting Rectangle. All right, so let's do a torn edge just in the middle. All right, it doesn't have to be really big, just a something and then we'll stamp a tree on it using that um, frost color Versamark ink. I think I'm just gonna use this little baby one right in the middle. I know, Elizabeth, isn't it cool? There's, there's a whole bunch of them. Nesting rectangle. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, the one on the table is four, this is five, six, seven, eight. Yes, Stacy has these, okay. I know somebody had them and I saw them and I thought that would look so cool. So there's the nesting rectangle and there's the uh, circle uh, oval. This is called Torn Edge Nesting Oval, Dies to Die For. That's the name of the company. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine. I'll be right back. It'll only take me like 15 seconds. 
And then we'll stamp a tree on it because I love trees. I like that. Run that through the machine real quick. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, we do have a link for Nancy's Amazon shop. Yes, we do. We will get that up in a moment for you. Thank you for asking. All right, so. Oh, okay. Nice. Stitched rectangles. Okay, so we've got some trees and some more trees. And oh yeah, a couple more trees. So we've got, this one is, uh, let me see, where do we start? They're numbered. Okay. Okay. All of these are from Local King Rubber Stamps. Let's get rid of this glare. Okay, this one is called Uh, I don't know. I don't see the name. Tree three. This one's called tree three. Okay. And I'm thinking this guy right here would look really nice in that section. But he might be too big, so I might have to stamp off. Because look how big the tree is, and this is my panel. So that might not be the best choice. This one is tree two. And we've got some pines, we've got like an oak tree, and we've got a tall tree and some look, acorns. This one is a possibility right here. This one might work. This one is tree one. It even says the word tree, look at that. Um, this one has a die that goes with it but it's quite large. It wouldn't fit on this. Oh, it might. And then this one is called tree four. And th those might fit. All right. So I think I'm gonna go with the oak tree because it's super cool looking. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's grab let's grab our tree. We're going to stamp this right onto this panel. We're not going to do it upside down though. We'll do it right side up. Can you, can you believe how many tree stamps I bought from Local King Rubber Stamps? She's got such pretty trees on her website. My goodness. And to brighten this up a little bit, I'm thinking about using this frost, Versamark frost. Because my background is pretty dark, but if I use this dazzle, it's a white frost Versamark ink. I think that would really look nice. Okay, so let's grab our Misty. I'm gonna take the mat out of it. This is a red rubber stamp, so we don't need the mat inside of our Misty. Uh, the edges are torn, and so it'll be hard for me to line it up. So I'll just put a little bit of that scrapbook.com. Um, it's adhesive, but it is not permanent, so it's you can remove it, you can remove the paper right out of there. Okay, so there we go, we've got it lined up. We're going to go ahead and stamp that with our Versamark Dazzle. Tree three, I think that's where I, hold on a second. Seriously, yes. This is from tree two. The, the one that I'm using 
right now is from tree two and tree two has the oak tree which to me it looks like an oak tree the tall like skeleton trees and it's got the pine trees so very cool and it has two acorns okay let's stamp this I'm going to stamp it again. So that made a watermark. It does look like a bonsai tree, yep. I'm trying to think if I want to go over this with embossing powder. Oh, Melody. Okay, you've got the same idea as me. A whole collection of leaves and trees. Yeah. I think I might have to just emboss it. Because I don't think it's, I don't know, do you think it's sparkly enough? So, here's what it looks like on the blue paper. I don't think it's sparkly enough. I'm going to have to emboss it, I think. At least I have a metallic. I could do silver or white. White would really make it pop. I'm trying to think of what colors I have. Let's see. Okay. I have silver, which is a metallic. Everybody's telling me to emboss it. I don't know what color to emboss it in, whether I should just do clear or silver. Okay. I'm torn, you guys. Okay, this is what happens. I'm trying to make my mind up. Let's go with silver. Let's jazz it up a bit, right? We will go with silver. I didn't... Uh, use my embossing buddy before I did this. So probably have fingerprints all over my blue paper, but we'll, we'll deal with it. Okay. Let's see how it goes. A silver tree. That's kind of cool. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. There's hardly any extra embossing powder at all. I thought there'd be like everywhere places that I had to clean up. Okay, that looks good. Yeah. All right, let's emboss this. Get some of this stuff out of my way. Okay. All right. So tomorrow's Friday, yay! Looking forward to the weekend, as always. And let's get rid of this. Let me straighten my desk out a bit, my uh, 
everything was sliding. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my heat tool on real quick and be with you in a second. Hi, Mary. Hey, Mary. I didn't even see that you were on. Mary sends me the most beautiful cards, you guys. Thank you so much, Mary. That looks spectacular. Of course, any kind, anytime you emboss a tree, you can't go wrong. Okay, Kiki, hi, I didn't see you on there either. These are from Local King Rubber Stamp. They're called Magic Mushrooms. And we have a coupon code that's good until December 14th. And it's for 25% off your order. And that is the coupon code, L-K-N-S-Y-T-25. Whoops, I didn't show that to you very well. Let's get that out again so you can see what it looks like. Magic mushroom. Okay. And Chow can link, when she gets a chance, the coupon code again for Local King Rubber Stamps. No hurry, chow, take your time. Um, and the website for Local King Rubber Stamp. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I think that you could even go like this with your card. Turn it this way. I'm thinking that it looks better this way. And for this one, for our card base, I think we might go with white. I think maybe, instead of black, because there's a lot of black in that background. I think the white might really make it pop. All right, so we've got this white card base. I just wanna see what it might look like here. That's pretty nice, I think. Okay, so there we have a pretty card. I'll go ahead and glue that. Okay, Nancy just linked Local King Rubber Stamp website where you can find the magic mushrooms as well as the, dye, the um, stamps that I used tonight. So I used Silent, silence. If I can find it, I'll tell you what it's called. Silence. This was the first card that I made. Okay, Local King rubber stamp. And then for my second card, which I'm still putting together, I used one of the new background stamps for slimline cards. It's called Spread. And I stamped it on my panel this way, and then I stamped it this way. So the branches are actually overlapping each other, or whatever you want to call them, branches. But it's, it's, uh, it's a little different. A little different that way, and I embossed it. I embossed it with I embossed it with clear embossing powder. That ink was the archival ink by Catherine Poehler, so it was still wet when I embossed. I didn't have to use any embossing powder. All right. Okay, yeah, I actually saved it. <laughs> I think the... I think the way this looks, it's a little bit too crowded on the inside. So I'm going to make a focal point 
with this tree, which comes from the local King rubber stamp stamp set called Tree Two. Okay, it's this one right here. Okay, and to cut out my little panel here, I use these dies to die for, which you can find in Nancy's Amazon store. This is the torn edge nesting rectangles, and there's also the torn edge nesting ovals. I'm going to get some foam tape and pop that up. I want it to have a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to use my Arteza. Oh, I'm sorry. I hit the I hit my phone with my foam tape. Sorry about that. Oh, thank you, Melody. We're going to get some foam tape. This is also something that uh, Nancy has an affiliate link for, Arteza. So it's really great foam tape. It's easy to work with. And it's easy to peel off the backing, which is important to me. As I said, whenever my hands are hurting with arthritis, I don't want to fight with my craft tools. I want to be efficient and enjoy it. <laughs> Just like you guys. Do this as a way to relax and try to de-stress at the end of a stressful day. Okay, let's go ahead and pick our adhesive seal off the back here. There we go. Okay, Nancy linked the foam tape. Thank you, Nancy. You're such a great moderator. You're really on the ball tonight, Nancy. Thank you. I want to make sure I have this in the right position before I stick this to the card. There we go. Super pretty and organic. And you can use this for any occasion. Um, could be for a sympathy card or get well soon. And then on the inside, you can stamp your sentiment. So I'm not going to put a sentiment on the outside of this one. I'm just going to leave it, you know, the way it is. And for this one, we use the Hamilco uh, paper, which has like a glossy coating to it. And we um, used our archival ink. And we're able to blend a background using the magic mushrooms. I definitely prefer blending with Himilco paper. So it's smoother and it it's, it's just an easier blend. So let's do one more blend. We don't have to make a card, but I have to clean my desk. It's got embossing powder all over the place. I don't want to get embossing powder on my card when I'm using the magic mushrooms. Just wipe some, some of this off. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's blend one more panel with um, Catherine Puller. Flirty Fuchsia, Something Borrowed, and Aqua Teeny. Okay. I just want you guys to see again how easy it is to blend with these, how smooth with this Himilco paper and the Magic Mushrooms. It's, it's really pretty effortless. It blends so well. And if you go to blend and you're getting a little drag, so maybe it's like skipping or not, you know, blending as well. This is a really pretty spearmint color, isn't it? Uh, you can always re-ink your, your uh, ink, and that will help, I think. I found that having it nice and re-inked and juicy 
really makes it easy for me to be able to blend colors together. Oh my goodness, my cord keeps getting in the way. Let me get that out of the way. Okay. You don't have to press hard. You just have to slide it back and forth. It's pretty effortless. And we will do our blue now, something borrowed. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's going to be Friday tomorrow and then before we know it we'll be live on Nancy's channel with Stamp Wars on Saturday. It's going to be so exciting. Ryan's going to be the host and he'll be planning all kinds of sabotages to try to get back at us for when we were hosts. This will be the first time that Ryan has hosted. And then there's another Stamp Wars and and Chow will be the host for that one in December. Man, we were busy. It's going to be busy in December. Yeah, it's so pretty, isn't it? So pretty. Let me turn this. Yes, I'm the same way, Gloria. My phone battery was pretty much dying when I started to go live, so I had to plug it in. I had to make sure it was plugged in. This fuchsia is really pretty. I'm just trying to blend that line out. I grab my blue again. All right, Tracy, thank you so much for joining the live tonight. It was great catching up with you. We'll talk to you later, Tracy. A little bit more blue here just to blend this so it's not so stark. Just going to go right over that purple actually. It's so easy to blend you guys. These magic mushrooms make blending so easy. One more couple strokes here with this aqua teeny color. Beautiful, beautiful color. Whoops, I almost bent my paper in half. All right, what do you think? I think it turned out pretty good, except for my finger spot right there, my fingerprint. Oh my, hold on, we can't have that. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper. And do some blending here and get this nice and blended over my finger spot. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to add some water to the panel because the uh, Catherine Poehler's inks are water reactive. But I didn't know if I should do that with Himilco because Himilco has like a gloss, a gloss to it. But one thing that I can do I can put some water spots on, all right? That way this thumbprint of mine will not be so noticeable. Okay, I'm just gonna take the water, spray it in my hand, get a nice little puddle there, and just flick it. Then I'm gonna get some nice spots. So, and I have a distress sprayer. I could definitely be using that, but I just like to Flick the water with my hand. Makes a pretty random pattern. Oh, what did I just drop? Okay. And then take my paper towel and dry that. So we've got nice splatters as a result. This is definitely underwater scene. <laughs> if I've ever seen one, this is definitely one for the mermaids. We'll save this panel for the mermaids. Isn't that pretty? So pretty.
I think Sebastian would look great on here. Or a mermaid or a butterfly. That would be great. Oh no, snow. We're supposed to get snow this weekend. Hi Kim, we're so glad you joined us. All right, so that's what I have for tonight. Um, what I'll do is probably get Sebastian or some mermaid stamps and finish this card and I'll post it on my, uh, well, I'll post it on the FSC and I'll post it on my um, Facebook and my Instagram. So please be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you liked this tonight, please give me a thumbs up and leave a uh, uh, yeah thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, if you would like to subscribe and ring the bell, you'll get notified of when I go live and when I post a video. That would be great. I would love to get to 2,000 subscribers. I'm close. I have 17, um, 17, oh, I can't remember, but um, I'm getting close to 8,000. I mean, my gosh, 1,800. And then I'll be getting close to 2,000. And oh, when I reach 2,000, I'll be having a big giveaway. So I hope you guys will all, uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't yet. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering how to clean the magic mushrooms, you just take your microfiber towel and you want to spritz it with a little bit of water. Okay, we get some water on this. Okay, and then you're just going to, you know, just wipe it, wipe it off on the microfiber towel. Right? You don't want to put it, do not put it under water. Okay? You just want to use your microfiber towel. That's, that's how you get the excess ink off. And then when you're done, you can store them in their little storage container. And you can put them back in the box that they were shipped in. And I'm not going to worry about cleaning these off. You can clean them off on a piece of paper if you'd like. But... Um, I'm just going to put them right into their box. And there was still a lot of ink on that, that pink one that I had. But yeah, I think the last panel that I did is perfect for mermaids. So I think I'm going to have to dig into my stash and find a pretty mermaid stamp. I didn't even use this yellow one, you guys. You love snow, Melody. Oh my. Where do you live? Because where I live, we get a lot of snow. I think too much snow. Okay. And this is what the acrylic base looks like. It's wrapped in paper when you get it. And you just want to unwrap it. You want to take that wrapper right off. That's to protect it. And that's how you store them. Pretty nice little system, I think. And yes, I definitely think I want to get another set for the pan pastels because that definitely make a nice quick tool for blending. Oh, Candace. Yeah, I think a lot of us can relate to that. Like, okay, if I get one more stamp, where am I going to put it? You can ask Nancy. She saw my craft room. She was ready to call hoarders when she saw all the supplies that I had. Well, stamps, really. Okay, I'm sure there's a way for this to work. So, let's try every other one. Um, I think that... What is her name? Um, Crafting Queen has used them for pan pastels. Yep. All right. That's how you do it. You put them in there. Close up that box. You got your two little storage contain your little storage trays. 
put those away for the next time. All right. Yep, craft hoard. Yep. I can relate. Well, thank you all for watching my live tonight. It's been great to hang out with you. And I think we made some pretty nice cards, even though this one didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. I think I saved it. And then I think this one will be great for mermaids. Or some kind of underwater, you know, type scene. And we will work on getting that uh, out to you on our FSC group on Facebook. We'll finish this one and I'll put it out on my Instagram. Thanks again for joining everybody. I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. Don't forget to watch Stamp Wars on Saturday night, 7 o'clock on Nancy.